What's up and welcome back to Gabe Miller Music. Today I want to walk you through my specific process for making full songs with the machine micro. And this would apply to any other machine as well, either the Mark III or the Plus. My particular process is a little bit different from some producers process when it comes to making full songs with the machine. And it actually mirrors a Groovebox hybrid workflow. And so you'll be able to take the stuff that I show you in this video and extend it to multiple self-contained Grooveboxes not just machine controllers. And this might be overkill, but I've broken this down into multiple different steps, starting with step one, scatterbrained beat making. This is usually a weekend morning session after I've made breakfast. I'll just sit down with a groove box, in this case, the machine micro, load up a bunch of sounds and just go. I'll try to place as few value judgments on what I'm making as possible and try to make stuff quickly. Once I've got a bit of a loop going, move on to the next one and go until I feel like I'm done, essentially. I'll probably incorporate ideas from music I had been listening to for the past week or so, and eventually I'll come back to that stuff in step two. On the machine in particular, I'll often start off by loading up multiple groups, and usually those will come from Native Instruments uh, machine expansions. They are overpriced, but as little inspiration machines and collections of sound I found them to be worth it just because I can load one up, start throwing sounds around, come up with something, load up another one, keep layering, and then keep going through this process, just layering and layering ideas uh, as much as I possibly can quickly. I find that super inspiring and it becomes super important later in the process. So for me, using uh, machine expansions and using pre-built groups are a bit of a shortcut to getting this whole process going, kind of speed running music production. You can also, of course, drag sounds directly onto the pads, whether those are samples or synth patches. I will do that as well if I'm looking for something specific. I'm going to be using a few songs and beats that I've made with the machine as examples in this video. So here are a few quick loops to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Sometime after that session has concluded, I will move on to step two, which will usually end up getting merged with step three, which we'll get to in a second. But step two is refining ideas. So this is where the value judgments come in. I'll listen to all of the beats that I had made in the previous session and go, this one's good. This one isn't doing anything for me. This one's lame. This one's dumb. I'll pick out the beats that have stood the test of coming back to them with fresh ears. And at this point, I've decided I want to develop these into a full track or at least have a go at it and see how it goes. At this point, I will also take the opportunity to add any more elements. Say I've written a beat with a full chord progression, but no melody. Maybe I'll take this opportunity to take a stab at writing a proper melody. And maybe that will take a beat idea from eh to Let's develop this. I'll add stuff, I'll refine stuff, and I'll be ready by the end of this stage to start exporting stuff, which is step three. This is the part where my process probably will diverge from what some producers use and what you might be expecting, because I choose to export stuff from the machine software and bring it into my own DAW of choice Reaper, which might sound counterintuitive. After all, Machine 2 is a fully featured DAW in and of itself with a song mode that you can lay out patterns in. But I prefer to lay stuff out in Reaper, partially because I like treating the machine as if it's a standalone uh, groove box or standalone music production station, even though it's not. I like it when it lives in its own little world and then I can just export those tracks, call them finished the way that they are, and then uh, arrange stuff in my DAW of choice. It's a little bit like working with an Electribe or an OP1 or to a degree an MC1 101, MPC1, all that kind of stuff. It's a hybrid workflow between a standalone groove box and my DAW of choice, Reaper. That is the approach I like to take with the machine as well. And I feel like I just get a bit more control in Reaper over automation specific effects and certain things that I want to be able to tweak. It's probably just because I know it a whole lot better, but the Machine 2 software is a little unintuitive without 
the aid of a controller. All that being said, let's actually jump into Machine 2 real quick so I can show you the process I use to export files because there are some important settings that you want to make sure you're paying attention to. All right, so I've got a project pulled up in the machine software. I made this very much as if the machine was a groove box, tried to look at the screen as little as possible, just layering as much stuff as I could. To do the export, you're going to go to File, Export Audio, and there are a couple of important things that I want you to be aware of. First of all, set your source to sound. This will export everything on a sound by sound basis. So each of these separate little tracks will all get exported separately, which is what I want in this case. I can choose my destination folder, give it a name, and this is pretty important to me anyway, I turn on loop optimize. If you've got a sound that where the notes bleed into each other, this will allow that to loop cleanly. It might create some weirdness, so you might want to export a version with this turned off as well, but I typically leave this on. I find it super helpful. The rest of the stuff, I don't touch. All scenes, that's fine. I typically only use one big scene when composing in the machine software anyway. And here's one other thing to be aware of. If I've got an element that is sidechained, but I know I want to have a section of the song with it not sidechained, I'll take this opportunity to export that as well. So I'll actually go in to my track settings, say take this compressor and turn it off and then do another export. Maybe I'll go in and turn off every compressor that I find and then do an export. That way I've got both versions to work with, one with sidechained elements and one without sidechained elements. Or you could just turn off all the sidechain and do that all just in your DAW. It's an extra step, but I found that it can be helpful. And of course, I'll usually just export everything as is. And then if I happen to need an unsidechained element, I'll just export it then. Both programs live on the same computer, so that's really not a big deal. You don't have to have the controller connected to the computer to use the software. So typically, I'll just do one export and then harvest any little individual elements as I happen to need them later. Step four is arrangement. At this point, I've exported everything. I've brought those tracks into Reaper. And if I've got one main loop, I'll probably just start off by grabbing that loop, the entire thing, and just copying and pasting it a bunch of times so it fills up, you know, two or three minutes or so. Then I'll go back to the beginning and start carving stuff away and start removing stuff. That way everything kind of builds up and I'll probably follow the progression of a track that I like, kind of use that as a blueprint for how my track could evolve and add elements over time. This is where having a ton of layers that you did during your scatterbrained indiscriminate layering session, that's where that's really going to pay off because you will hopefully have a bunch of stuff that you can work with that will raise the energy level over the course of a song, provide variation, all that kind of stuff. Once I've got a rough arrangement going, maybe half a song or something, I'll start to look for ways to create even more variation, like effects, new song sections even, or new song sections created from effects, and automation. And let's jump into Reaper right now so I can actually show you that. This is a fully structured track in Reaper. I'm gonna show you a couple of these rapid fire. So this is what all of the individual tracks look like when I've just dragged them directly in. You've got one big old loop just ready to go. And so now I'll grab all of this stuff, copy it, and then just paste it a bunch of times through my timeline till it's roughly two to three minutes. Then I'll start deleting stuff. So for instance, I want only this intro lead and 808. And I can keep building like that. And then like over here, I've got a little breakdown. Where I've introduced a new element. And then another kind of drop section where I've introduced more stuff. In this case, I'm just working with that one singular loop and I've used the amount of layers that it has to create variation throughout this fairly short arrangement. This will go on a beat tape or something. It's not like a proper full song. And here's another one, very similar setup. <laughs> Except 
except uh, that's supposed to be filtered up because in this case, I've actually added some automation to this main lead. With a filter lifting over time. But here's what's fun about this track. I've been using this glitch plugin lately by Devious Machines, and it's tempting for me to throw it on almost everything, and I have to kind of restrain myself a bit because it can turn song sections into other song sections and create new song sections. Let me show you what I mean. So here's a bass track. Here's how it originally sounds. So you've heard this in the previous section. Here is it with the plugin on. That's wild that it's capable of that. So I've been using this plugin a lot and I've got a bunch of instances of it and little chopped up elements to create some real chaos. then back into your main section. And I've been using this technique for creating new song sections quite a bit with machine tracks specifically. Here's another example. Oh, it's gonna wanna download that in it. Download complete, yay. So later on, I've got a little donk bass thing. And that's already one instance of the glitch plugin, this little guy right here. So in context with the mix. So that's fun, but I could take that even further. Check this out. These are both from the same bass track. So let me play this, turn off the processing. So that's what that one did. This one. Versus. You can barely tell what it even came from. And this element has also been through the glitch plugin, although it never actually goes away. Pretty good little sound effect. But with the glitch plugin, a lot more interesting and unique sounding. Also, I should show you the preset that I used for that big old rumble cyber snare. Anyway. That's something I've been having way too much fun with, and it basically let me create an entirely new song section, as well as quite a bit of ear candy, so I can bounce back and forth between this and the main bit. Step five is finishing the mix and master. I do tend to both mix and master as I go, both in machine and in Reaper, so all along I've been tweaking settings and refining the sound, but this is the stage where I've got my arrangement pretty locked in, now I'll do my final mix down and master. I'll make sure I tweak anything that needs to be tweaked, anything that's standing out too much, not standing out enough, anything that sounds a little bit harsh or muddy. I'll reference the mix on different systems if I can be bothered to do so, and generally just do the final bit of polishing that the track needs to get from 95 to 100% done. 
And with that, I've got a finished song. From there, I might uh, film a video around it, put it out on my channel as a single, or I might put it in what I'm calling buckets, which are basically multiple albums or EPs I've got developing kind of in parallel. So maybe I've got one bucket that's kind of dark, moody beats, and another that's a little more upbeat and cheerful, some stuff that's maybe a little more retro, some stuff that sounds more industrial. Uh, I've got a few of these kind of buckets just ready for me to start dumping songs into. And once I've dumped enough songs into them, I'll start to see if uh, a theme is emerging, if I can do some stuff to make the songs connect a bit more. And eventually those kind of take form as albums or EPs. I like to work this way. I find starting an album or EP from the ground up can often uh, be intimidating, overwhelming, or can lead me to obligate myself to a project that I might end up not being excited about down the road. So this is kind of my way of processing a larger project and seeing it emerge over time. And usually I have multiple of these going in parallel. And that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see more machine videos, you can click or tap up over here somewhere and I'll be back with a new video in a little bit. Peace.